Oh, hey, look, that's Jonathan Morrison, and that's an iPhone 11 in his hand. And this is my homage to his wonderful iPhone 11 Pro Max review intro. In a world where iPhone 11 Pro Max starts from 1100, iPhone 11 Pro from 1000, this iPhone 11 starts from $699. So, what's the catch? At a glance, you can see that it is missing the telelens. It is made from aluminium, doesn't come with a fast charger, and the screen does not flicker. But is that all or is Apple hiding something from us? To figure out, I used iPhone 11 as my main phone for a while, and all I can say is, shut up and save your money. Here it is! iPhone 11 comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box we're greeted with the iPhone, then some papers, SIM card ejector, blow dryer for Smurfs, USB to lightning cable, and an ancient 5 watt charger for your shelf where you display your Sinclair Spectrum. Now, let's commence to the important test. The sizzle test. Nice! iPhone 11 has the same processor and RAM iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max has. At the back, it has two 12 megapixel cameras, wide and ultra wide, that can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second in extended dynamic range with optical and electronic image stabilization turned on. Front facing camera is 12 megapixels as well, and that one can shoot up to, yes, 4K 60 frames per second video iPhone 11's dimensions and weight is exactly the same as iPhone XR. It has the same LCD HD display, but instead of one, it can resist 2 meter water up to 30 minutes. And it has the same LTE bands, Wi-Fi 6 and ultra wideband spatial awareness that you can find in the Pro series. Before we move on, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yes. The screen of iPhone 11 and iPhone XR. For this, I'm gonna show you an 8K video playing on two devices, iPhone 11 and Note 10 Plus. And if it took you more than two seconds to decide which one is 11 and which one is Note 10 Plus, I guess you know what I'm going to say next. The screen on iPhone 11 and iPhone XR is just Fine. It's not the best, but it's not bad at all. Let me put it this way. Have you ever seen someone complain about iPad's pixel density? iPad Pro screen has 264 pixels per inch. And all the iPads before that had the same pixel density since 2012. Yes, since iPad 3 iPhone 11 and iPhone 10 are iPhone 8, iPhone 7, iPhone 6s, 6, they all have 326 pixels per inch, which is a lot higher than an iPad. So guess what Lou said about iPad Pro screen? The screens actually look nice. The resolution and pixel density is not everything. I mean, if 326 pixels per inch was a problem, then people would be very upset with Galaxy Fold's 362 pixel per inch screen. 
And trust me, unless you're gonna use this with a VR headset, everything is fine. It's not the best screen, but it is fine. Now let's talk about things that matter, like performance. When it comes to the Geekbench test, as expected, iPhone 11 is up there with Pro Series iPhones. When I turn the battery saver mode on, nothing surprising is happening. Same with the compute test, iPhone 11 performs like a pro, and to do results are great as well. But when it comes to graphic bench test, iPhone 11 takes advantage of its lower resolution screen and blows everyone away, even in the off-screen test. In real-life tests like game launching, iPhone 11 is head-to-head -head with the pros. And as you may have remembered, when it comes to exporting a 4GB 4K file to 1080p in Adobe Rush, iPhone 11 does not act like a budget phone. The reason why iPhone 11 performs this well is because it has the same CPU and same RAM as the Pro models. And that's very unlike Apple. I love it. I hope this change is here to stay. Because any choice you make in this iPhone 11 family, you end up with a good deal. What else do we have in common with the Pro models you ask? How about audio zoom? Let's look back at 10R again. Now back to 11. That's a random citizen talking about her band Time and the Dragon. I love how nice the audio zoom works. If you missed it, I have a comparison video for Note 10 Plus's audio zoom as well. Also Dolby Atmos, but before we go into the Dolby Atmos test, I'd like to remind you to put on headphones because it's gonna be in binaural audio. You'll be hearing what I am hearing holding the phone in my hand. I'm bringing back Note 10 back onto this comparison because it got an update and now it's a lot louder than my initial test. Even though it sounds more mono than Dolby, I have to say, way to bring back those speakers back to live Samsung, good job. How about cameras? In 4K 30 frames per second, we can see some improvements in stabilization. But iPhone 11 really shines in 4K 60 frames per second where it can keep the optical and electronic image stabilization on and shoot in extended dynamic range. As I mentioned before, 60 frames per second extended dynamic range means iPhone 11 family is actually shooting in 4K 120 frames per second. Remember, Samsung S or Note 10 cancels out two out of three lenses if you want to shoot in 1080 60 frames per second. Yes, not even 4K. If you dare to switch to 4K 60, it cancels out two out of three lenses, HDR, electronic image stabilization, and it can't even save that video on your memory card. Front-facing camera on iPhone 11 is same as the Pros, which is better than iPhone XS and XR's front-facing camera. Being able to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second or 4K 30 frames per second with extended dynamic range is making a lot of point-and-shoot cameras obsolete. However, when it comes to slow-mo, I didn't notice any difference between 11 and 10R. Pro tip, lock your exposure before shooting slow-mo. If you like to take photos, then you're gonna love iPhone 11. I can't stop myself from taking photos with iPhone 11 and honestly, apart from a couple of instances, I really didn't care about the lack of the telelens. I really enjoy editing photos in Apple's ridiculously good photo editing section in the stock photos app and my favorite, 
Adobe's PS Express. iPhone 11 also shoots one of the best looking portrait photos and you can add all beauty effects on it as you wish. I'm so glad they went with the ultra wide instead of tele lens. It's not the best in low light but you can still get pretty amazing looking photos and videos with it. That's one lens you need to remember its limits. In night photo mode, iPhone 11 is pretty impressive as well. I shot this photo 10 p.m. at night and it looks like it was shot during the day. Some say it looks unnatural, but I like it a lot. Even though deep fusion is much more apparent with the tele lens on the Pro series, you can still see its effect on iPhone 11's wide angle camera, which is nice. I played PUBG on this device and thanks to its dumb bots, I got easy chicken dinner. Even though I was recording the screen and the audio, the gameplay was very smooth and at the end of 30 minutes, iPhone 11 didn't feel like it was overheating at all iPhone 11 does 97% of all the things the Pro models can do. Yet a 256GB iPhone 11 is $400 cheaper than a 256GB iPhone 11 Pro Max. The battery life is not as crazy as iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max, but it is still really, really good. The gap between 11 and 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max is so much smaller than the gap between 10S and 10R. And I think... That makes iPhone 11 a fantastic phone. But the only unforgivable thing Apple did about iPhone 11 is there are no leather cases for iPhone 11 and that really upsets me. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it and slap a person who says Techtober. Please let me know what you think about iPhone 11 in the comment section below and until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and I'll check out